Hello, Charlie PCP here, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're looking at another deck profile, and it's for Darkrai V-Star. Kind of like an underrated opinion in the format, but it hits for relatively weakness in certain Pokemon. So, how is it doing right now in Japan? Well, I'm going to be honest with you, it hasn't had the results it probably deserves. It's had a second and two top eights in the City Leagues. But it is an incredibly powerful attacker. 30 plus 30 for each darkness energy attached to all of your Pokemon is really, really strong, especially when you team up with Star Abyss. Um, so during your turn, I get two item cards from your discard pile. So reusing Dark Patches or Cross Switcher is a really, really strong setup. But saying all of this stuff, and the amount of thing I've done both pre and post rotation, it is still incredibly slow and can miss quite a bit. But before we go on, let's look at the list. So this is my list for it. And if you can look at it, it looks very similar to what um, the current one may look. I run a 3-3 line of Darkrai V-Star. I don't think you can really change too much from that Pokemon line. It's a really strong attacker. You're never going to need more than three, uh, especially if having super duper strong attack. Now we play a 2-2 split of both the Galarian Moltres. Both of these are really, really good. Uh, Galarian Moltres V has an amazing ability where once per turn, you can use this ability only once per like the turn, uh, um, put attach a darkness energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. Really, really powerful. And it's attacked doing 190 and then 30 to itself. Another good counter to Mew, Gardevoir, just another like two prizer attacker. And then we have Galarian Mordred, the baby one, with its amazing ability where when you place it down on the bench, you can attach up to two Darkness Energies as well when you attach it. So you get those two down, you can use the Galarian Mordred's V ability, Dark Patch, and you're looking at probably doing like, one fifth, like 150 to 240 damage turn two, which is really, really strong. And Galarian attack gets stronger every single turn your opponent takes a prize 20 plus 50 for each prize card they've taken really really powerful um attack now we now the only new cards we really add are is this forever it's a draw engine which i find amazing because the draws card and it's literally an engine pokemon uh you may discard one uh, basic energy um, which is really good we play 14 and if you do you have six cards in hand i think this is exactly the card that Darkrai has been missing this whole time. Um, and also you can use this bait. The bait one has also one retreat if you use the 60 HP. So it can really utilize um, the um, opponent's beach court. But the forever room kind of gives it the consistency. You have Greninja, you have forever room. You can just call on my and draw as much as you can as possible. Kind of want to see is, I would say, you're trying to see your deck. You want to cycle through with the energy, put them in a the discard pile, and then hit hard. Full cards, we are running one Choice Belt, one uh, EXP share. From testing, Choice Belt is still really good, especially when you look at the meta. Uh, Giratina V is looking to be the best deck right now in the format, as well as Luca coming on the rise. A uh, really powerful, just to get that extra 30 more damage instead of that you can, if you don't get the energy. An EXP share, say a Pokemon gets knocked out. Yes, you've got to use one of his energy to attach to Moltres, but the EXP share can reattached to another one the dark right on the bench support line i like the fourth research one serena one boss because we're running for cross switcher really like cross switcher the ability to draw cards as well as get a switch get a um, boss or serena in is really really strong this could be seen as quite an early dark cry list with the cross switchers in but i really really like cross switches it's worked really well in testing uh, i think it's a really powerful um item card especially to utilize when you have um Pokestop, you also have Dark Cry's V-Star ability, so you can constantly use it again, as well as Trekking Shoes, so you can go through your deck as quickly as possible. And even potentially get a turn one Moltres, so you utilize Cross 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 Richer, it's brilliant. So yeah, the items are pretty much one escape and then four of everything else. The thing about Dark Cry is you need to have the consistency. So having as much high outs as possible to it makes the deck work a bit better. It's kind of a shame that it never did like more damage. It did like a 50 plus 30 or like a 60 plus 30, which could have been a bit stronger. But I feel like it's still a really, really powerful um, attacker, especially with Pokestop. Try and go through your deck as quick as possible. Get the attackers out. You aren't running like um, 
any Pokemon recovery cards like Miriam. But so you've got to be really careful when you rip the Pokestop, off. You're not going to discard like loads of Pokemon because you're not getting them back. So this is my first thought of the I think it's really powerful, really strong, definitely an under the radar pick uh, because of these reasons. So these are kind of like the rough matchups I thought of, especially looking at results, looking at testing, uh, watching the videos. And surprise, surprise, it has a decent Gardevoir and Mew matchup. The reason why, it hits for weakness. Again, don't say you're going to immediately win. They flip over a Mew, you flip over Dark and go, right, I've won this. Mew can do Mew things and it can be absolutely devastating. Uh, the reason why I've also put Palka is a 50-50. It's purely at the basis that if it's the Kyogre build, which is more commonly played now, it can be really detrimental because you're not running mana for you're not running any bench support. And Palkia can just set up, hit hard, especially with Curly, draw out as much as possible. But if they can miss, or if you can try and get the first attack and you keep up in prizes, I would say you have a decent Palkia. Same thing why I say about Arceus box is also positive. Depending on the variant, they're not going to be hitting for your weakness. If they do run like the Ice Rider, which is a more common build, uh, it can be a lot more devastating. But if it's more of a tech boxy one, like Galarian, Zapdos, and Moltres, and Hoopers, and all that lot, you can kind of have a better feeling, especially with Gardevoir as well being a positive matchup. And that's kind of the reason why Darkrai at the first place was really, really strong. Purely on the basis that Gardevoir takes a while to set up. Like, you're not going to sit there and go, oh, I've got a turn two Gardevoir, I can now hit for like knockouts every single turn. You've got to get the energies in the discard pile. You've got to build up to the attackers. You're not going to get like 10 energies in the discard pile with a Gardevoir, EX is then a baby Gardevoir, or Zamazenta V to try to hit really hard. So you have a decent Gardevoir. Your negative matchups are definitely Tina Lost Box. Tina can just go absolutely crazy. It is really strong, really powerful. Same thing with Lugia and Maraidon. These decks are these really powerful, very hard hitting early decks. And I would say Darkrai can really struggle. Like if Maraidon gets like a turn one attack or a turn two attack, Darkrai can struggle. Lugias are now going to single strike version of the deck, which I'm really excited. Kind of excited to see. Like Lugia still hits hard, but it's not as devastating and like it gets you out of the game. But it can hit like 270 damage. It can hit really hard. Same thing with and Tina. It can be really, really um, kind of a struggle. Again, these are early matchups. This is most likely going to change, but kind of from my testing, these are what I've seen as positive and negative matchups. So anyway, my final thoughts on the list. I think it's a really good archetype. I think it's definitely a sleeper pick for this format right now. It is getting some results, but not as many results as I would have loved for it to perform well. But it's definitely something you've got to consider because it has relative hits for weakness. And that's always a good thing in Pokemon. If you hit the correct weakness... Or they're always going to come up and get use. Like, look at Tyranitar and Single Strike. That's all of a sudden come back because it hits relevant weakness. And we're in a format now where there's two um, dark weakness Pokemon. You're looking at a good shot of Dark Ride performing well if it gets the right matchups. And especially if you get this draw engine set up, the same thing with um, Greninja, you can have an absolutely amazing time by hitting 300 on damage, like turn two or three. So anyway, what do you guys think of my Darkrai list? Uh, let me know down in the comments down below. If you're new, consider subscribing. I post um, uh, day, nearly daily videos on post-rotation stuff. I'm really excited. It's so nice to finally get some new cards and not be in this dominating format we're in right now. So yeah, uh, I will be back in a few days or tomorrow. Depend Who knows whenever you watch this video. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it and I will see you guys later. Bye for now.